How do you tear down a skyscraper? Well, as the old punchline has it, very carefully. But on the cover of Science Times this week, science reporter Henry Fountain makes it clear that it's not just a matter of being careful. Henry traveled to Tokyo to watch the demolition of a 40-story hotel, and he's back to tell us about the science of creative destruction. So, hi, Henry. Hi, David. So, uh, how come they couldn't just, uh, you know, blow it up? Blow it up. Yeah, that's what everybody <laughs> wonders. Um, actually, that kind of demolition, which is referred to usually as implosion, uh, is only used in about 2% of cases, number one. But number two, in a place like Tokyo, as in a place like New York, where buildings are closely packed, even a very carefully controlled demolition is a dangerous and risky thing. So it's basically not allowed. So no, uh, no high explosives, no wrecking balls. No wrecking balls either, because you need room to swing them, and you never know what's going to happen. Basically, the idea is you have to keep things as controlled as possible. And the, the most controlled way to do it is to actually take it apart bit by bit. You point out in your story that they weren't even allowed to build high rises until the 60s. Yeah, right? it was sort of a, a, a offshoot of the 1923 earthquake, the famous earthquake that really destroyed Tokyo. Uh, for, for the next 40 or so years, uh, the building heights were limited to about 100 feet. But, you know, the economy took off. It, it started with the 1964 uh, Summer Olympics, actually, when Tokyo hosted the Olympics. The economy took off, they started building, and they have lots and lots of buildings. They built some hotels like this one that the ceiling heights nowadays are very sort of tight compared to sort of modern standards. So uh, what did they do? So in, what makes this un interesting is because, you know, uh, cities occasionally have to tear down large buildings. In this case, in Japan, uh, the environmental regulations and the recycling laws are such that uh, they really want to keep it under control. And so what they do in the case of this hotel is they kept the roof on. Ordinarily, you would first thing you do is get rid of the roof. Uh, and then they built a scaffold sort of hanging off the roof that hangs down about three floors. And the, sca and the roof and scaffold are supported by these beams, these uh, columns. Uh, they destroy, uh, demolish a couple of floors, and then they lower the whole sort of this cap that they built, the scaffold or if they lower it down over the course of about seven or eight hours, and they start on the next two floors. So it's, it's kind of bit by bit taking the, part, taking the building apart from the top down, keeping it all, if you, if you were to walk by every day, you wouldn't really notice anything's going on. You might, over time, you might think, hey, that building is like, you know, half the size that they used to be, but it basically looks pretty normal. You were in the hotel yourself while was, this was going yes, on? Yes. What was that like? Uh, well, I spent most of the time down in the bottom where, uh, where I talked to the engineers and stuff. Up top, it's a total uh, you know, chaotic scene with um, uh, heavy equipment and uh, you know, dust and, and grime and, and everything. Uh, and then it stops and they have these jacks that actually jack the roof down over, as I said, you know, six or seven hours. And then um, once the, the roof's back in place to work on the next two floors, the columns themselves are lowered down. So the whole thing is kind of this leapfrogging effect. It's, it's pretty cool. It's almost like a building project in a certain way. Yeah, in, in reverse, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Um, you uh, also describe a different kind of process on this one. I, it just totally boggles the mind. Mm. Uh, demolishing a building from the ground from up. From the ground up, yeah. yeah. How does that work? Uh, and that's, that's also in Tokyo. Uh, that's been a, done a couple of times, and that really is like building in reverse. So what they do, the, the building they just finished in January uh, was uh, something like 300 feet tall. It had 40, uh, it's a steel frame structure, it had 40 columns. They cut each column about two feet at a time, and they support them with these big hydraulic jacks that can support, you know, a thousand tons each. Um, and they do it in a, in a sequence so that the building doesn't kind of, uh, you know, fall over while they're doing it. They've got it very planned out. And then they lower all the jacks, uh, that two feet or so, all at the same time. And they cut another two feet out of each one, lower it down until they get, I think they have to do three or four of those before they get to the next floor. They demolish the floor, they repeat the whole thing again. So all the, all the demolition work actually takes place on the ground, which means a couple things. Number one, it's generally safer. Uh, number two, you can use bigger equipment because you don't have to raise the lift the equipment to the roof or to the top of the building. Do we have a lot of obsolete skyscrapers in the United States? You know, we don't have a lot. We actually, we may have some in New York. 
the people I talked to seem to think that, you know, tearing down a building is a big deal. So that in reality, maybe you'd get, you know, half a dozen, maybe a dozen most buildings torn down. But still, you know, in New York, we had the Deutsche Bank building torn down a couple of years ago, and that was uh, damaged in the, in the World Trade Center attacks. Um, and we had the Coliseum, where the Time Warner building is now. Mm -hmm. But before that, the biggest building, and it's still the biggest building ever torn down anywhere, was the Singer Building, which was torn down in 1968, and it was 600 and something feet tall. So, you know, we haven't torn down very many big buildings, so we may be, we may be seeing more of them. Well, when it happens, Henry Fountain will be here to tell us about it. Yeah, I'll try to stay out of the way. But. <laughs>